Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. I need a pep talk today, James. You need you need a pep talk. I do, I do. I just you know I feel like I need one today. Oh. There's some mornings where you wake up and you just kind of stretch them on out and you say, you know what? I'm not feeling my best. I need a pep talk. Yeah, I don't do pep. I'll try. Okay, sure, sure. Um, sometimes falling feels like flying for a little while. That's that's what that's what you're. Is that a no? Not a work? no. Sometimes falling feels like so flying for is, for a little while before you hit the ground. Yeah, what I'm saying is like you know when you jump either off the building or you're falling out of you know and you're you're falling to to your death, death broken bones, paraplegic, whatever it may be. That little part. Oh, in you're between. going. You're, you're going para. I would have said quad on that one. I would have said full, full fucking quad, but you're yeah. going para. Okay. So, but, but you're dead. You're so, falling into the ground. Either dead or, or completely paralyzed. Gotcha. But, Vegetable. But for, dead. for one but, brief moment. But, and I'm, you're I flying. Hope this makes you feel better. And it, so that, no, little, it doesn't. It doesn't. that little part mm-hmm. could be fun. No, 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 it couldn't. Gosh, what is a pep talk? I'm still. Um, what does wanna, that you mean? You want to Google that or? What does that mean to give a pep talk? <laughs> tell me what. Is it to just tell you what's happening? You just told me that for maybe five seconds to pretend that I'm flying instead of falling to my death. No, I'm just saying on the way down, sometimes it can be fun. Sure. Have a little fun on the way down. Okay. So you want people to enjoy. Right before their death. So if a, if a, pl- if a plane happening. was crashing, right, you would say, yes. hey. Hey, it, it could feel kind of fun for a second, right? Yeah, Ooh, enjoy that part of it. Zero gravity, <laughs> right? That fun stuff. <laughs> We're just like, oh my gosh, the excitement of it. No. Again, I don't, I'm not sure. What a pep talk what is. What a pep talk is. Um, for me, yeah, I guess, I guess I always thought it was like, tell you what's happening to you. And that's it. No, no, definitely <laughs> not. You know. Now, what is it? Something like Rudy. You know, something now, inspirational. Is it to be, now, is it to be positive? Put a positive spin on stuff. Yeah, is put it a little, to lie. It's it's a little Lionel play world. Turn this frown upside down. You know. So it's a lie. Now, listen. You know, I cannot do that. I'm not saying it's a lie. Sometimes I'm saying it's a lie. Like if someone is I'm saying pretend to be happy. If someone's you know if a team sucks if they're losing right don't lie to them. Let them know in the locker room that it's over <laughs> at halftime, right? Look, now I, that again, now that would be on a good drinking pep bros talk. sports. I let the listeners know, like, hey man, your team is fucking awful. You're done. Same with mine. If my team is fucking awful, I'm like, hey, forget it. Just push in. I remember I pushed in all my chips. I said, I'm done. I folded. Uh-huh. I gave up everything. Right. When the Falcons started losing last year during oh, game yeah. week four. I said, this team is fucking toast. And they were. <laughs> I was right. That was from Crazy Heart, that, that little pep talk that I pulled out. Was it really? Crazy Heart. You remember that movie? Yeah, big fan. The daddy of all daddies. Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges, yeah. the head daddy. He's now talking without his teeth in. You know that, right? You know what? And, and who cares, <laughs> right? I don't care. I find it hilarious when no, he's I out, though, to hear him in he, interviews where he's just like, So I think he's oh, getting, yeah. It's, it's, very, uh, it's, uh-huh. it's very in the back of the throat now. Where it's just like, it's, he's it's getting very in the back out, there. And I don't think he's getting them back in is the deal. So like, yeah. you know, every, everyone at a certain age is going to lose teeth, right? Is that real? Yeah. It is. Yeah. You can't just veneer it like Clooney and those guys. I think you can at this point. I think they all will. But, you know, Bridges Day, it was like, I don't know. He, I think he lost them. Yep. And, and he never just said, got fuck him. it, right? Yeah. Never right. got them back in or whatever. And that affects. The way you talk. The way you talk. The way your face. Yeah. Like, it's strange, right? Mm-hmm. 
Because a lot of people think, hey, man, I could I could lose a toe and probably go on with my life. No, you couldn't. Mm-mm. You couldn't. And, like, you see somebody like Crispy, like our good friend Crispy Avia. Right. Like, that's a real fucking dude who's gone through some shit. And, like, you know, him losing a toe, he, he'd tell you to go fuck yourself. Right. But a normal person like myself, mm-hmm. if you lost a toe or the back row of your teeth or something like yeah. that, like, oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect you. But you don't realize it until later. So No, you don't. And nobody will tell you. Like I, I don't think one. anybody will tell Bridges. No. Like to his face. No, like, they hey, won't man. be like, hey, man. Jeff Bridges. You'd think his wife would. But I think it's right? sort of, it's a slow, so I have one, yeah. right? Um, I'm getting an implant put in, but it has been a while. Yeah. And like the way, like the way that I chew and stuff is like. It's weird, right? Different. So it like affects your jaw. And like how you talk and the way your mouth moves and stuff. Why did but you it's, lose that tooth? But it's gradual. So instead of. Why did you lose it? Because you were discussing human. What was it? What do you mean a disgusting I, human? I it's don't know. Instead of a root canal. So it was like uh, I, was, I was poor at one point. <laughs> and like um, pulling a tooth is 300 and root canal is upwards 90, of 2000. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You just said fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. Said, Little known fact, it. it's way in the back. Nobody really cares, right? Yeah, no, and I'll get, you know, I'm going to get it. Yeah. Someday. Whenever. When I, when I get a couple bucks in my pocket. <laughs> you've, uh, had, you've had more than a couple bucks in your pocket. You just don't want to go, I think. I'd rather get I just don't, close. You, I don't think you want to go, I know. <laughs> than a tooth, you know? <laughs> but they will, my dentist is loose, f- plays fast and loose with the scripts. So I should go. Really? Yeah. I mean, is it that Indian dude? Yeah, and he will. He'll. He'll. He's a weird guy. He's weird, but he just he'll just write it for if you go in like, um, and he checks your you do cleaning. How does it feel? Does it hurt a little bit? I'm fucking down. Just saying. I so. had that Indian guy, man. Mm-hmm. He right. He was fast and loose. He was weird. He was weird, but like oddly, his bedside manner is terrible. Is terrible, but yeah. he's awesome. <laughs> His his office is great. His practice is great, right? It is. It is. It's nice. It's super nice. But like the way he talks to you is super strange where he's just like, hey, man, because I, I, I had a thing where I grind my teeth, right? right. Um, I, for years, I wore those fucking mouthpieces and shit like mm-hmm. uh, it kind of looked like a like a child's mouthpiece for Pop Warner football. It's kind of what it looks like, right? Yeah. You you boil it in water, and then you put it in. You put it in your mouth at night, and after a while, I was just like, "Fuck this! I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with this." And yeah. I was like, "I'll just whatever grinding happens at night. It's so late. I'll never know, it, you know, until they're gone, and then I can just go in and get these fuckers replaced with veneers because I have a veneer right now. Right. I know the process. I know the whole fucking thing. So I'm like, eh, cool. So I went in and I saw him, and I said, mm-hmm. "Hey, man." I heard there was a thing where they could insert uh, kind of like a cement on top of your teeth, you know, right. and just replace that. And he goes, yeah, that doesn't really work all that great. I just, yeah. I just wouldn't do it. And I was like, what? And I was like, man, you're, you're, you're making like you're losing money here by telling me this, you know? And he was like, I know. But he goes, you want the honest truth about it, brother? He was just like, just grind them down so that, you know, it's too sore for you to take anymore. And then just come in and get veneers, man. It'll probably save you a good four or five years from this shit. And that's what he said to me. And I was like. Did he say it like that? Because to me, he was just very dry. He was. Did the whole thing. And then he comes in and goes, all right, well, you need an implant. It's going to be about 3,000. You want to do that today? Or And I'm just like. The yeah, way de- that he dentists, talks. Dentists is- don't give a fuck. They, they kind of are like car salesmen now where they're just like, hey, so you want to buy this? It's only like four grand down today. So what do, you, what do you want to do? And you're like, all right, cool. You're, well, you're right. When I was in there, because I had to get something else done. I forgot. I, I think I got my teeth whitened. We were going to do live shows or something. Right. And uh, I was like I don't know, two or 300 bucks or whatever it was. And he was like, great. I'm going to need to charge you before we do this. So they brought the nurse in and like rung it up yeah because that that you know teeth whitening is considered uh it's not considered on on, on your health insurance oh, of like no, no, yeah no. hey it's considered no. cosmetic it's cosmetic for yeah. sure and but he was like hey man i'm gonna have you sign this and we're we're good to go oh and yeah i was like all right cool oh yeah um but he 
he just, I think, talks to everybody like they're rich. And I mean, I even said to him, I was like, hey, I go, dude, do people just pay that? Yeah. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> and this was a long time ago. So I was like, I mean, for him to say that amount and sure. then just be like, should I do you, so cavalier do you about wanna, it? Yeah. And just be like, do you want it on a credit card or debit or yeah, like, what yeah, do you? Yeah. And I was like, uh, uh, I was like, I have to go. But I did say to him, I was like, you say that to people and they just do it. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and um, so right then and there I go, I like you. And then it was like fast and loose. He's like, at least let me just send you with a little coding, right? For your troubles. Really? Oh, he's, I'm right. telling you, All fast right. and loose. Yeah, we, we love a loose script around here. We, I don't know how he is going to be now, right? With the... Uh, Who knows? Opioid crisis. It's, it, yeah, I'm tired of hearing about the fucking opioid crisis, to be honest with you. I'm I mean, sick of it. I, here's the thing, because all, all these people real, are dying but yeah. from fentanyl. Well, look, if they were getting real pills, people wouldn't be pressing fucking fentanyl and giving it out, you know? So... Yeah, I don't I don't really give a shit about it. It's the same way with like alcohol or marijuana to me. For me, it's like the pills aren't the problem. It's taking the pills away from people who are addicted to them because then they're going to do other stuff. Right. But there's it, I'm just making it. it like, yeah, but here, here's the them. thing. The, the cigarettes are addictive. Alcohol is addictive. Right. Pills. Yes, are addictive. All this shit, though, you know, is addictive. Uh -huh. Like as a human, you're like, all right, cool. Food, food for Christ's sakes. If I wanted to eat 15 fucking Whoppers, I'd, I'd, lo I'd love to be able to do that. I have to make a but conscious effort. But I would kill myself. A conscious I'd, effort, I'd die. A conscious effort every day not to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have to, when I wake up in the morning, I have to, what is this? I have to. Um, <laughs> you pretending to smoke a, I know, I was smoke a lipstick? My, I was holding my chapstick ah, like a fine. cigarette for a second. I have to make a conscious effort every day. Not to eat the things that my my body and my brain and my heart wants to eat, right? <laughs> right. And it's a it's something I think about ev all the time, right? Yeah. When you're like driving by a McDonald's or thinking about what you're gonna eat, or you get hungry, or you, whatever, I'm always thinking. For me, it's food, right? Yeah. So it's not a lot know, of people. It's not though. the same as heroin, right? But you have to make a conscious, you know. I, I had the decision every day. I had not the shirtless, to do it and it's hard. Yeah, I had the shirtless showdown in San Antonio, and you know, we got in fuck. Both of us got in pretty good shape for that, right? Right. And I was f fucking jacked. Um, God, goddamn, Dave shoots me from the worst angles of all time. So uh, on the Drinking Bros videos, I look horrific. But uh, uh, when we got back, I was like, man, you know where I'm hitting first. Little C's. Oh, yeah. Little Caesars. Oh, yeah. That There's nothing. Crazy bread. Because we were flying back from Los Angeles. There's nothing better than just a late night Little Caesars for you and the kids, and you're good to go. That, cr that crazy bread is legitimate, son. Legitimate. The other thing, too, about Little Caesars is I know the tricks. I know the tricks of the trade over there. I never okay. worked there, but I know the tricks of the trade. What do you mean? I know that you need, it is mandatory mandatory to ask for extra cheese on those pizzas. Okay. So you go through and you try to get that hot and fresh, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever. I think, I think that's the, the new catchphrase they got. We can just drive up and it's already ready. And then you just stuff it in your window. So it's You're the good opposite to go for of fresh. Yeah. It's hot and ready. Yeah. It's hot and ready. It. There <laughs> it is. <laughs> so not, nah, it's not bespoke. You know, you and you can scratch out fresh with ready, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it's hot and ready. Nuke that out altogether. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's ready. You can have it. But they don't put enough cheese on it. True. That's not from my liking, right? But mm -hmm. you ask for that extra cheese on there, boom, you're good to go. That is a fucking pizza that I love. And I'm in the minority on this one. Like, I'm a little Caesars champion, but I feel like, I feel like I'm on the way, way, way down. Um, I'm going to tell you. Way the, down on the minority mm -hmm, scale on that one, The pizza, I don't love it. The crazy bread oh, you is love. for my money as far as like side breads. Sure. <laughs> a, a side garlic God, I bread. Love a, I love a good side bread. I go, I go crazy Domino bread first. I go dom domino second. I go olive garden bread. third. Oh, right. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. And then begrudgingly, mm. begrudgingly yeah. Papa John's after that. For the side bread. I've never yeah. had a side yeah, bread. There. I've, I've had it. Uh, look, I work there. Worked there in high school, and I, f I look. I hate Papa. He's gone now, by the way. Yeah, so I heard it's Shaq. Shaq is taking over. 
for Papa on the board. So he's going to be Papa? No. Yeah, I guess he's taking over his board okay. seat. So he's going to be in the Papa position. You know, it's still going to be Papa John's. <laughs> um, but. You're so stupid. <laughs> what? He's going to be in that position, dude. Shaq dunking on people. He's going to be in the Papa position. Who doesn't want that Papa position? Hush. Um, but he's there. And he's doing it. I, look, I hate their fucking pizza. I always have. Right. Just not a, I'm not a big PJ guy, you know? Yeah. But so little as Little Caesars I get down on, obviously. Right. And I know the tricks of the trade and that. But yes, I, I, I will give Papa I John's put, some credit at four for my side bread. For side bread. Um, nobody asked me. I think we did this on a couple, uh, like episode two or three. Right. Of this show where we did our rundown. We did. We do love to do a pizza rundown. Nobody asked for it. No. Nope. We are going to. We gave it to Always them. give it to you. Um, so pizza for me always is going to be Domino's first. Right. Fast, fast food pizza, right? I mean. We're yeah. not talking like We're, worldwide, obviously. This is so funny. That's exactly what you said in like. The other episode. Well, uh, and two years You're ago. You're like, wait, wait, wait. Now fast. And I'm I like, wanna, what else are we talking about here? I'm like, oh, wanna, no, I'm not, I'm not saying for the like audience. the one place in Brooklyn that's awesome. Yeah, like, yeah. I want to clarify this for the audience. Fast, fast food Now, pizza. I would love to do a list like that. Again, nobody asked for it. But I would no. love to do a list of like we actually go to the renowned line around the d- corner pizza places and Barstool do that Sports list. already does that. So the Pizza uh, Kings or something like this? It, uh, I think it's Rate the Slice or whatever it is. I'm saying for myself, I would want to do that. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a blast. It'd be a fucking so, blast. So, yes. No, I have not been able but to I, do I that. Don't, my problem is this. I don't, we've, we've gone to a lot of late night pizza joints all over the country. Yeah. I don't remember the names of them. Like, there's this place we've gone in Chicago twice. Yep. After a Cubs game, yep. it's the we best. walk there. Fuck. It's about a mile walk, but it's. You guys, people in Chicago, you will know this. You, they'll know it. We don't. It's in a neighborhood. I think it's, it's like the only joint in that neighborhood that's, that's open. open late when you're leaving the stadium. Yeah. It, but it's again, about it's a like mile a mile walk. walk. Yeah. It's if you're on your your map or whatever, it's going to be the closest thing for late night. From Food Wrigley Field. From Wrigley Field. Yeah. So you guys, Tim, you probably know it. Um, Tim Morris definitely Tim knows Morris it. Tim Morris knows it. He's our Chicago guy. Yeah. For sure. Um, but yeah, that, that, like that place. I don't even know the name, but that's, mm-hmm. a, that's in the top five for me. For sure. And their breads were fucking fantastic. And if you're open later and I eat your pizza past midnight, you're already bumped up to a five. Easy. Because Easy. I'm... Obviously, a little wasted. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, you've you were open late. You're accommodating I'd, to I'd, me. I put that high on the list. Yeah, there was one in college that was open till like five a.m. Gumby's Pizza was the pizza shitty, probably. Um, but it was, it was like garage pizza. The but other it was night. yeah, it was open late. So I was just like, uh, fuck it. You know, mm-hmm. we would all, it, it always it, would, it always came down to Gumby's where it was just like, all right, great. And it was five larges for twenty five dollars. Oh, my God. Uh, it, it was probably cardboard with cheese on it, to be honest with you. Gumby's pizza. Did you ever go to NoHo Diner in L.A.? No. Oh, OK. It was like the late night. Everybody goes there. After yes, the... I actually have. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. I've been there a couple of times. Um, it's all right. It's okay, but it's good for open late. You can go in there drunk, get the table. The waitresses know what's up. Yeah. Like you sit outside, yeah, yeah, smoke. Yeah. yeah. Well, when, when we smoked. When Nobody we smokes sm- anymore. Nobody smokes anymore. It's weird. You're considered a dirt bag if you smoke now. I, I had this discussion with a buddy of mine who still smokes, Jack Mandeville. Um, and I was like, hey, man. How does he feel about that's it? That's what I said. I talked to him. I was like, because uh, he came in. We were doing, uh, we recorded a show together. And. He goes, uh, I was like, man, did you just have a cigarette? And he goes, yeah, can you smell it? And I go, yeah. Always. And he goes, fuck, man, I'm sorry. And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, I used to smoke, man, for like 10 years. And I was like, it's become such a dirtbag thing now that it's super, super rare. Isn't it funny that we thought we were getting away with it? Yeah. People thought back in the day, we thought we were getting away with like, we smoked outside, sprayed a little something. Yeah, you're never getting away never with it. Never getting away no. with it. No. You can always smell it's when crazy, someone. crazy, dude. 
Listen, do I miss it sometimes? Ah, I don't. I mean, you it, don't. Just the the whole act of it and the habit of it now, where it's just it's it's become so hard. They've made it so difficult oh, for that, smokers. That part I like, don't like. But if there's like another walking out in the cold, mm-hmm. uh, uh, what I out. love about it now is like the. You know, probably you with, you know, you guys with gummies or whatever. What I like about it is the kind of like, hey, want to go smoke? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And like, yeah. maybe you don't really want to, but it's this act of like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. And we know it's like dirt bag and gross, <laughs> but you kind of do, you know, and it's I found this a, like I, I shared. Found a pack up in the, uh, the laundry room that was yours, I believe. Oh, yeah. Did you leave it up there? Yeah. I didn't fucking take yeah, it. Yeah. I'm not going to throw it away. Yeah. Was it your sister? I, was your sister in town? No, no. Who was it? Who was smoking with you? No, it was me. And I think I was going, I was going somewhere. I was going to hang out, I think with like Dirt Maddie, bag. Chelsea or something. Because Chelsea vapes, her boyfriend smokes. Like I, there's still like a little Gross. group that sometimes there's a couple people in there that smoke. Yeah. So I bring a pack just, oh, and at book club, there's always a girl that's like, hey. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, right. moms at a table, we're drinking, talking about our kids. And all I want to do is just be like, get me the fuck out of here. Like, <laughs> let me do something that's like not about my kids. Right. Right. Please. Yes. We went to that preschool. Moving on. Give me a fucking cigarette. Right. Yeah, exactly. So there's that. But that pack I bought. I mean, at this point, probably four months ago. Poof. You know what I mean? Where it's it's like, it's just up there of like, I like to like have it up there. Do I ever smoke them? No. But it is the thing of like, "Hmm." if somebody ever like came over and was like, hey, I'd be like, I have one. Let me see. They're like stale. Right. Yeah. That's the best part. You're like, ew, gross. Never mind. But you're like, I do. I do have a pack (laughs) somewhere. How stupid am I? I know. But. When I was, we need things like, you know, at a certain age with the amount of kids and the neighborhood. You no, need, for you sure. You need little things. I don't smoke for weed. Sure. I don't do any I, of I that. I got a couple friends who started doing uh, nicotine gum, right? And it just gave them a little ping, they said. A little like energy. And then what happens? Uh, then they kind of crash after that. And so. they, cr- they start craving the gum, I'm sure. Yes. Like getting oh, addicted yeah, 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 to yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, 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 no. Yeah, it's crazy. No, thank you. If I'm... Uh, it was never for the like ping of it. It was it was for the social aspect of it. So I didn't even really like smoking by myself back in the day when when we would smoke. Now this is a long time ago. Right. I would more like to I like the social aspect of like let's sit on a porch, have some wine, smoke cigarettes, and it's something that could keep you in one place for a long time, right? Because right. you're like, we got smokes, we got drinks. You know, you don't, you're not trying to like move on to the next thing or whatever. Sure. So I liked that part of it. Um, nicotine gum. It's like, oh, let's do some nicotine gum together outside. Like, yeah. I smoked cause I was a, you know, dirt bag writer partying and all that shit. Like I think too, you did. I mean, it, it did help. And sometimes it helped in like social situations, right? It was like, because when everyone did do it, you go to a party and it's like, okay, maybe you don't know that many people. You can always go it's outside true. and be like, it's I'm true, smoking yeah. by myself. Like, I don't need anybody. Everybody smoked in LA, I felt. Yes. And it was a, con- you know, congregative whatever thing. That's not a word, but yeah. But you get what I mean. Yeah, I do. So, sh- so is it? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right? So is it a word? If you, I said it, you got the meaning. <laughs> Maybe it's not English language, <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> it um, did. No, it did. So, uh, so yeah, I, I guess I'm just trying to defend our, our smoking days. And, you know, everybody knows in L.A. at, at, the, at that time. Fuck. There's, there's still events where everybody's smoking. I wanted to, I wanted to really? ask. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about this because uh, the feds, it says today, are worried about uh, terrorism at Burning Man. Um, everybody the smokes last there. Place I would think. Gosh, no one hates Burning Man more than you. No one hates Burning Man more than me, and nobody doesn't care about it more than me. I guess. Yeah. Probably the terrorists are the only ones that don't care about it more than my I. My thing is this: everyone who goes to Burning Man looks like a fucking Al Qaeda member. Like they've got towels and shit wrapped yeah. around their heads. 
Rudy's I mean, gone, right? Rudy Reyes? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's I'm gone sure, every sure. year. I, He's gone every year for the past, no. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. He has to. Craziest interview I've ever done, by the way. Oh, my gosh. But everybody. I love him. So do I. He was great. It was one of the, probably one of my favorite drinking bros of all time. If not my, the my. Absolutely. Probably my, my favorite episode out of 400. But Absolutely. I looked at Rudy. Like, you're right. Rudy is the t- your prototypical guy who goes to Burning Man and really enjoys the whole shit and soaks it in. But everybody looks like a fucking terrorist there. Yeah. Because you got you to gotta be wrapped up, the sandstorm mm-hmm. and all that shit. Mm-hmm. You remember we, we had a friend that went there, Brant? Yes. And it, like He has, I mean, he's just now getting back to normal. How yeah. many years ago was this? Remember he, he had that, like a towel wrapped around his face because there's, there's crazy sandstorms and all that shit, right? Yeah, so you start doing like the cool mask and then the wrap <laughs> around and the glasses like the... um. <clears throat> like old school steampunk. Yes. Yeah. Very steampunk. He wore a top hat with it. I'm like, why'd you do that? It's elements of steampunk mixed with Charlie and the chocolate factory, like Willy Wonka shit mixed with, you know, Mad how Max. you think it would be to like be in Iraq, maybe Mad Max, yeah, yeah, like yeah. all these there is some Elements. military aspects of it. Too, right. Where you're just we're like, do- hey, we're man, doing it. You guys are, there's a lot of camo there. Mm-hmm. Why you're going to see a, a fashion camo. a wooden man burn and then listen to you know house music on acid? Like what's the remember that guy that just ran into the fire? Was it last year? It was shit. We had the guy, you know, Chip actually. Uh, he started a couple of those festivals back in the day for Burning Man because they they lit a man on fire, you know, and that would start the whole thing. Yes, they light a big man at the end. No, 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 it. a real man. Oh, okay. And then As a he person. would light the, yeah, so oh, okay. the, then the person okay. would walk okay. over and light the sticks on fire or whatever, right? <laughs> it was Chip. Chip, who worked for me forever, um, did, fuck, man, almost every movie I've done, except for, I think, Range 15. Mm. Great guy to have on set. Um, he is- was the nudist. Yep. He was the nudist who demanded mm-hmm. that his dick be out. He didn't demand it. He said politely to me. Hey, man, because I try to bring him on, you know, for uh, crew and, and stunts and all that other shit. And for Darnell Dawkins, mouth guitar legend. And he goes, hey, man, have you cast the naked man yet who's serving you sliced watermelon on a, a sterling silver tray? Right. Who's just circling you completely buck naked. And I was like, no, nah, man, I haven't gotten to that yet. Like we, you know, we're, we're just getting into casting now. That'll probably be like the last role I cast. You know? Sure. And he goes, can I be that guy? And I was like, yeah, I, he's like, no, it would mean, it would mean a lot to me and I'll cut my quote or whatever. And I was just like, and then he told me the whole story if he's a nudist and then he went to Burning Man and all this shit. And I was like, fuck dude. Uh, so then, you know, I loved him, saved my life in that movie. I, I actually caught on fire in that oh, fucking yeah. movie. Yeah. We Hired him for the next story. movie, Pool Boy. Yeah. And then he was buck naked in Pool Boy. He loves being buck naked. By the way, Pool Boy Drowning at the Fury is is now free on Amazon Prime if you have it. Oh, it wow. is the most polarizing movie in today's society right now. If you go and read the reviews, 50% of the people hate that movie more than life itself. 50% of the people love it more than life itself. It's mm-hmm. one of those movies if you get if you get it, you're in. Like you're you're in the cool kids club. If you don't, you're just a fucking idiot. You know, so we're right. just making fun of B movies. But you'll see Chip again buck naked in that. And that's so when you see that man's dick and balls out, know that he lit his oh fuck, he lit himself on fire in Pool Boy too. He put he played the boom guy. He loves it. He loves it. People love that shit, man. When is Burning Man? I don't know, James. I don't keep oh. up with, with Burning Man. I just read today that the feds were worried about it, and I'm like, you gotta be shitting me, man. Everybody looks like a Please. fucking terrorist walking into burning man yeah please Good don't luck. worry about burning good man. luck with that i like if there's one event where you can't profile people it's fucking burning man for christ's sakes they're all dressed like they're living in the fucking mountains of afghanistan crazy <laughs> it is crazy I don't well you know oh god shit. now uh, i'm gonna start to have the nightmares the reoccurring nightmare about being just Waking up in Burning Man, <laughs> at Burning Man, no water, no water. I've got to barter my shoe for water, for a bottle of water because I can't buy it. I've got tons of money. I've got money just coming out of my pockets. No one will take it. No one. They only want no my shoe. No water shoes. for you at Burning Man. Yep. 
<laughs> they only want me to like b- b- do massage to get the water. And I'm like, can I just give you this hundred dollars? Nope. nope. That's nope. not how it works here, lady. Sorry. Lady. Sorry, lady. I'm talking about Bitcoin. Everyone's talking about Bitcoin. And you know, now it's, it is just going to be just, ri- it is, it's slowly, you know, because white people ruin everything. It's slowly becoming like your friend. Yeah. So it's like the richest people are the only ones that can really do it in style, right? Yeah, they right? come on the fucking decked up RVs. Decked out RVs. Shit. They've made their floats. They've got all the best Like drugs. Joaquin Phoenix will be there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where you're just like, oh, all yeah. right. But you'll it'll be in like a tricked out RV or something. By the way, speaking of Joaquin Phoenix, God damn it, that guy has nine lives. Did you see the Joker trailer? When you're good, you can do whatever you want. Can you? I guess you can. Apparently you fuck, can. You man. can fuck off the academy. You can piss everybody off. You can be a crazy person. Yeah. You could be a dick. Yeah. You can not show up. You could fucking hate Hollywood. But if you are good. Yeah. You can live love forever. It. It's crazy. I almost love like the other part of him that it's like. I, I had that no good. interest to see that fucking movie. Like, no. After what was it? Suicide Squad. Because we went to that. I think we walked out of that. Yeah, we walked out of halfway through. Suicide I think Squad. because of Jared Leto's Joker. To yeah, be honest. you were you were fucking pissed. pissed. And we're not even comic book people, but we wanted to see what the Joker was like. Yeah, and his. And I you thought, were like, this this is too much. Only because I heard how he was always in character and wouldn't yeah, talk yeah, yeah, to any yeah. that kind of bullshit. And if you're gonna pull that Daniel Day Lewis shit, you better be Daniel Day fucking Lewis, right? <laughs> and he just was like, it looked like he just threw it together and was just, who was he doing? He was who was know. he doing? I don't know. Uh, but the, he was supposed to do a spinoff movie, and then boom, the trailer for the the Joker with Joaquin Phoenix drops, and they canceled that movie. I cancel anything ever again, Joker wise. Man, that was a good trailer, and like, I, like I'll be sucked into seeing that movie. And again, I, I've that's when you can get me because I fucking hate superhero movies. If you can get me to go see a superhero movie, that's the you. real congratulations. Good for yeah. you, yeah, yeah. Where it's the story of one guy, and it didn't look like there was a lot of weird CGI or crazy fight scenes or whatever. It really is you know, goes back to back in the day when people it looks like people, taxi driver, people like hearing the Yeah. But they like hearing the origin stories of all these superheroes, which people die hard. People that are into it. They like that shit, right? There was a sweet troll in there for, uh, the, the Joker's name is Arthur Fleck, mm-hmm. a Fleck for Ben Affleck, you know, who was playing Batman. And like everybody's trying to decode this online now of like, ooh, what does this mean? Ooh, I did they love hate him? It. Did they shoot the movie while he was still Batman and didn't know? Like, what was it? Uh, people are trying to figure that out right now, but he's not Batman anymore. I, but I can tell you this like, it, anybody who thinks they're shitting on Ben Affleck with that. Or is it for Casey because of his sister, Joaquin? No. Uh, Look, you want to go? You want to go? Uh, that's a big call, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because he fucked over his sister. Maybe. Maybe. And maybe he hates Ben. Who fucking knows? But I, I think he probably doesn't love that family, I, for sure. I think when they shot the film, Affleck was still Batman, and I think it was a nod to that. That's I'm my sure. guess. Cause it was, I'm sure that's the easier answer. You, you have to shoot that. That shit is shot a, a long time ago. Yeah. Like the, especially those superhero movies. I mean, that's that's big boy shit where it's like, hey, we're not just shooting this in two months and then putting it out like a sailor right. movie, you know, that's that's some real big boy. Sh- Speaking of big boy shit, Tucker Carlson, James, what beat all of CNN last week, the entire primetime network of CNN. He beat in his time slot all week long by oh. one million viewers. What do you do if you're over at CNN? You see that? What do you what do you say and do? That one show. And and look, I don't give a fuck whether you watch Fox News or not. I don't give a shit if you watch CNN or not. But if you're in a, you know, space race like that for the best ratings and one guy beats your entire network, will you just go I mean every democrat should drop out? At this point, I, I don't know. I and guess. wait till, <laughs> but right. You know what's weird is that I, when I sat down and looked at the ratings, 
Ross Patterson Revolution is more, we have more ratings than a CNN show. Yeah. Like more listeners. I mean, they, you know, they obviously count viewers and shit, but like, how, how are you staying on the air? I guess, I mean, I guess it's just traditional Trump media just... is fighting for their life. Yes. And they are not going down without a fight. And there is still a lot of people that only think of traditional media as the, I mean, as the only thing. If, tr- so if Trump once wasn't in there, I, th- I think those that like CNN and them cave, like they don't have anything. Uh, I remember reading something on this from another, it was another CNN reporter who saw the same headlines with the mm-hmm. ratings. Mm-hmm. And he goes, he put out a tweet and he just said, oh, it was a slow news week. No, it wasn't actually. That was when the fucking yeah, Mueller no, report dropped. It wasn't. That was it was huge. The biggest victory lap since the election. That was a massive news story that you'd been working on, CNN in particular, for two years. And then he comes on and says, ah, slow news week, you know? Nothing mm, we can do about it. Fuck you. <laughs> That's Nothing we can crazy, do. Sorry, man. nothing really happened. Mm. That's fucking crazy, though. Mm-hmm. A million, I mean, one man just beat an entire network. How, cl- how close are they from collapsing? Um, I think... Once the older generation that just watches TV dies. Maybe. So there's still like a large portion and people, especially news, that only watch it on TV. My grandparents were like that. Mm -hmm. They used to sit down and watch like Larry King and all that shit. But still like your parents, my parents, you know, my dad a little bit. My parents actually don't watch the news. But they watch they watch TV like that's the yeah, way that yeah, they yeah. consume their media. Big Blue Bloods fans, my parents. right? Um, so that generation, not, not my dad news. recently has gotten into watching YouTube news wise stuff. Okay, um, but not really. And so there's a whole. I mean, that's a couple years before that generation is is gone. Right. Um, and the. The people like our our age, younger millennials, younger millennials, they don't watch TV at all. So no actual TV, TV channels. So, um, you know, that's it. It's just cycling out, basically. I mean, you're stupid to not do traditional media because you're cutting out a whole viewership, right? A whole group of 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 people. But I find it interesting when, when, you know, we travel so much, we go to these Airbnbs. And I, whenever somebody has cable, I'm shocked. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I watched the Today Show. Maybe you got to wait for me to die. Yeah. Right? Uh, <laughs> t- today's show is different, I think. Um, I know. I, I almost like it for that traditional media feel. You know what I'm saying? They're not telling me anything I don't know already from Twitter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I like them as people. <laughs> right? I like watching them. Sure. So... Yeah, but is that where I is that the first place? You know, something happens, you turn on CNN. No, not for me. No, because I know other avenues that are going to get me the real story quicker. CBS is making a big push towards the apps. You know, they got that CBS All Access. It's five bucks, and I'm like, a friend of mine, Michael Raymond James, is on one of those shows, and I was like, man, what the fuck is that? And he was like, oh man, that's where CBS is headed. And then boom, the Jordan Peele. Twilight Zone series dropped on there, and I was like, oh, fuck. I guess this is legit now. So it seems like they're preparing, where I feel like ABC and Fox is preparing. We we used to watch uh, Lethal Weapon on Fox on the the app, but like, yeah, they've been there for a while. I feel like CW, ABC, and NBC are kind of just still fringy, where it's like, eh, watching on my TV. Well, who are they owned by? Uh, Universal. NBC yeah. is, uh, ABC is ESPN. So some of the events, you know, I'll, I'll, I watch a lot of the ESPN app. Yeah. Now that they got UFC too, that's the jam. That's the jam, son. The jeezy. Yeah. Speaking of which, whew. What? See that, that Connor Khabib fucking Twitter war last night was intense. I don't know. Man. Connor, Connor McGregor called his wife a towel head. Uh, cause she's Muslim and posted a picture of her wearing a towel at, at like, you know, well, wait, a, a, Conor McGregor called Khabib's wife, wife, a towel head. Yeah. And then posted a picture of them together at, at their wedding with like, you know, she what was does co- Conor McGregor have, I mean, cover up he's and then done, isn't he? here's the thing. 
Khabib then posted to Connor, uh, once you shut the fuck up, rapist, you're nothing but a rapist, and posted some picture with some woman that was not his wife. And he had his hand up this, this chick's skirt. It got so bad last night that Dana White had to intervene and be like, hey, guys, let's take this off of but social why, media. Again, Conor McGregor retired. I don't think he wants to retire. He's not Well, clearly retiring. not if he's still fucking doing this bullshit. Yeah. I, I don't think he wants to retire at all. I think he wants that big money from that Khabib rematch. Um, and, and their suspensions retire? heading to an end. That's what I don't get either. Or is, you know. I don't think that was staged, though. That was that, that seemed a little too far to me. Where I was just like, "Whoa, you're you're crossing gang lines now." Yeah, but Conor, Mc, I mean, he always he's always taking it there. Not that far. I mean, that's hey, you're getting into somebody's religion and wife and like you know, calling her fucking towelheads a little. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rapist is fine, but it's not. But I mean, look. He was, he? Just, he was just confu- well, well, he was just confused. Uh, he was just not convicted, but uh, arrested for it. Like there, there's allegations in, in Ireland. He was arrested for it. Yeah. So he's Yeesh. he's cooperating with the police right now over in Ireland. But I don't I don't know what the real story is. Who knows? I, I have a hard time believing that Conor McGregor really needs that. You know. Yeah. I also had the same feeling about Tyson back in the day where it was just like, eh, it's Mike Tyson. You right. Know? I don't know. I don't know what was what was what in that whole sitch. I'd love to get him on the show. Tyson? He's been out and about making he's been doing shows. He's been doing the rounds, yeah. He did uh Rappaport. Mm-hmm. Michael Rappaport it was weird as fuck too. He's just weird. He gets high, man. Yeah. He gets too high now. He was on I did I listen to him on Rogan as well. He get he gets fucking real high these days. He's got that cannabis company, and you know, look when I met him. When I met him, he was really fucking high. Really? Yeah. Just shook my hand for like a really long time, and it was just sure. like hey. he's just a puppet propped up at that point. Kind of, but he's I look. He's still Mike Tyson. Like there's a it's strange with him when you see him in person. He's still really big. Where oh, you're like God yeah. damn it. You could still knock my head clean off my body and there's nothing I could do about it. Yeah. There, there's an element where you're like, man, do you still work out? Or how do you, you know, how are you staying in shape? Because he's still in decent shape where you're like, all right, fuck, man. Right. You could, ju- you could go, you could walk into a bar and just rip people's hearts out. But he's stoned all the time. So you're like, eh. I think he has to be or else he will. He'll maybe, bite, maybe I can get bite one, people's maybe ears. I can get one punch stuff. in, you know? Right. Like he's so high where you're like, yeah, ah, maybe, yeah, I, yeah. maybe I could squeeze in one punch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a fucking awesome picture of him. He did, because he's been doing like uh, signings and stuff like that a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess he's been doing that for a while, but uh, this, this, this kid dressed up like a little kid is, is little, little Mac, little, you know? Okay. Well, Joe, uh-huh. uh huh, the the fighter who fights, you know, Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson's punch out, right? It's pretty. Oh, rad. that's awesome. Yeah, so it was a pretty rad picture. Sweet. Yeah, ah, um, I admit, that was my favorite game as a kid. Okay, that's why. yeah, no, that was good. I definitely. That's why I say it. I've played it. Um, I don't know if I would. I'd step out for that show. By the way, which one? The Mike Tyson. I'd step out for that one. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talking to people super high and me worrying where their mind is. Yeah. Um, as far as like, are they still with it? What are they talking about? <laughs> their weird tangents. I can't. It's my least favorite. That takes you out of it, huh? I just don't. I, I would just be think. you know, he is so weird. He goes on weird tangents. He gets really high. He you know, doesn't really understand what your what the question was and stuff like this. It's a lot of tears and then like maniacal laughter. And like, mm. we were like, Oh, all right. Yeah. Fucking a mm-hmm. Busey's so, like that. Where it's just I'd like step out for sure. <laughs> and let you two, let you two crazy kids have some fun. I'd take it over. I'd take it over. It's weird though. How like you have heroes like that. And then, you know, they're signing boxing gloves for you for a hundred bucks or whatever it is. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's it's it's, it's so strange to me because they they always seem like larger than life, and then all of a sudden, you know, boom, hey, I'm they're right in front of your face, and they're signing a glove for you, like yeah, like nothing in happened. In like a weird booth in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt the same way. I, re- I read this thing about uh, John Lennon's um, piano during the the Sgt. Pepper era mm-hmm. is up for auction right now. Where I'm like, how? How is that fucking? Po- how can you own that? Um, he wrote, so he wrote A Day in the Life on there, mm-hmm. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, Good Morning, Good Morning, um, and being there for the, the, the benefit of, of Mr. Kite. And it's like, why, is, why does somebody have this to sell? That's shocking to me. Yeah, where did they get, oh, where did they get it? Maybe Yoko? Did she sell a bunch of his stuff? I don't see her doing shit like that. I do. It's it's weird. Um, I do. She's been in weird lawsuits with his kids for years. Oh, she's over slimy, rights to the music yeah, and she's shit, a slime and stuff, and and the estate, money. Like she's a slimy little. It said it. Look, it says it's his favorite computer. I mean, a uh, uh, piano. <laughs> Sorry, everybody's it, everybody's doing shit on computers now. Um, every fucking artist is I feel like is doing piano? it on a computer now. It's an actual piano. And that's why I say computer, because like the last time we were in a studio, it's all plugged into a computer now where you're just like, yeah. hey, plug a keyboard in. Hey, plug the piano into the, the computer. And you're like, what? And you can, you know, it comes out flawless. You don't have to sit in another room anymore no. where it's just like, no, and then play it perfectly. Then you did. Um, but his last one sold. He wrote Imagine on, on another piano. Mm-hmm. And that sold for one point seven million. But like George Michael bought it. George Michael bought it, but who sold it? I think it was Yoko. Maybe. Why would she? I don't know. Because she's in a contentious, she's been in a contentious fight with the kids over money I, so and he, estate he, here's and, what it and says. property for years. The folks over at Gotta Have Rock and Roll are set to auction it off. I don't know how they got it. Um, but that that right there is just like, man, you could write the you can make the best shit on the planet, the most famous shit of all time. And then all of a sudden it's just like, nah, I'll sell it. It's worthless. Yeah. That's so yeah, weird who, to me. Who is it? Yeah. Who was it worthless to that? They you know what I mean? Again. Yeah. Like, how is that piano? Just like, eh, uh, we could probably get rid of dad's piano that he wrote. Imagine. What do you think? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you have anything? Um, we're going to do a yard sale, maybe. Do you have anything you maybe want to? <laughs> I've got some like old, like a, you know, baby, like a bassinet that I'm not using anymore. I have a globe, a bar globe I could put in there. I've got John Lennon's uh, piano, piano he wrote from, Imagine. From Imagine, right? You want that or? What do you think? What do you reckon? Throw it out there, see what we can get. God, it gives me weird feelings about life. It really does. Yeah, but you like that all to- of this this shit is so unimportant. I know we mentioned this a few episodes back, but it like even this, I was like nobody's nobody sells that, right? And then boom, it's yep. for sale. Like usually the the shit that's for sale these days is like weird shit, like <clears throat> Tupac's last car is his last car, right? And you're sort like of a Hummer, like, where you're like, eh, how did somebody get that? It, but I it's mean, a Hummer. Yeah. Like I don't really give a shit about that. If it was OJ's Bronco, fine. They've sure. been trying to sell that thing for years, and they don't—they don't have a buyer for it. How much is it? I think they're asking a half a million. So it's just been sitting in this guy's fucking. That's not bad. So I'm saying to get OJ's. I know, and I wonder if it still has blood in it. That's my question. Mm, I don't think so. I would, it would have to. I they guess didn't clean if it. Whoever the police don't clean it after that. Who owns it and is selling I gotta, it? I, I've gotten three cars stolen in L.A. And you can go and, you know, whenever they find it, because they'll eventually find it. Mm-hmm. And you can see what they picked apart or whatever the fuck happened in there. They don't, police don't do shit to it. Like once it's there, it's there. And you're like, ah, all right, cool. One of them, I got stolen and they had robbed like uh, 16 other places, including my house. And um, uh, the, I had OnStar. And it's exactly like the commercial where it's just like, oh, oh it's me. The car is stolen. <laughs> Hello, it's this is me. on star. They're like, sir, me remain calm. <laughs> yeah. Hi. You call the police. You call the police. Hi, it's me. <laughs> They're like, what? Two minutes later, they called back and they were like, 
We found it. We have your vehicle and the police are on the scene. And I'm like, wow. holy fucking shit. OnStar. OnStar for the goddamn win. And uh, so they were like, look, the, the engine is still warm. The guy just got out. This is what the cops said. This. So mm-hmm. they're like, we're going to stake this out for you know an hour or two. And they then didn't. probably not. Mm-mm. They're probably just a lie. They not told for me. one second. They were laughing like this. Yeah. We're gonna, and then they were like, hey, we're going to take this back. Mm. to the impound lot and then fingerprint it you know and get all the shit yeah. and, and whatever right they didn't do that either they did that actually so that fingerprint shit was everywhere all over the car where they i was just, just like all right cool just did it. I'm probably i probably just, <laughs> spr- just sprinkled it all over the car like <laughs> they it was stolen cars i gold promise bond you in la fourth of july party they do not give a shit yeah probably not anyways when i got the car it was you know Dirty as shit, covered in that, and you know, different fingerprints and all that stuff. And uh, they were like, "Yeah, you know, we we couldn't find the the crook or whatever." And it was like, no, there was a speeding, there was a ticket this guy had gotten, and I think he left his wallet in the in the fucking passenger seat. And I was mm-hmm. like, "This this is the guy." Mm-hmm. They were like, "Look, man!" And finally, they were just like, "Look, we're overworked. We don't have time for any of this shit." And I was like. All right. Okay. I'd rather hear that answer than nothing. Thank you for your candor. You know, the weird, the weirdest part about it was nothing was wrong with my car. So, like, I found a crack pipe in it. Like, two crack pipes. And you were like, thank you. Uh, 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 thank Steal you, Steal it sir. again, yeah. please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get gifts, right? No, but the weird thing was I took it to get it washed, and that was it. So, like, wow. you know, then you start, you're just driving it like nothing happened. You're like, fuck, man. This is weird. I'd had that car like two weeks too in LA. It was a Tahoe, brand new Tahoe. Homeboy was just, they found it on a third street promenade, you know, mm-hmm. like a, like nice. Right. Like, like, like maybe mm-hmm. he was going shopping or something. Sure. Or, or the beach. I don't, right. I don't know what he was doing. Right. Who right. knows? Who knows? But that, yeah, that's the weirdest part about it where it was just like, all right, we dust it and that's it. Go fucking get it cleaned. Yeah. We're all done with you. We're yeah. all done with you. Oh, your theory came true, by the way. Which, finally. Which one? I have so many that are ah, right. I have so many that are right. The good one. What? The theory? The good one of uh, not ste- like not wanting anything to do with old people and being taken. Where you, you've always, uh, you know, said, look, I never got me too Oh, okay. You never, you know, you never went through any of that. Like, am I not attractive enough or uh-huh, whatever? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. This, your theory is, is correct, by the way. That I'm not attractive enough. No, not you. Oh. But just like people in general, like picking over who they want to pick over. Um, there was an American that was kidnapped in Uganda on one of those safaris. Like, yep. you know, the one that you always take with the tourists and shit, like mm-hmm, a famous mm-hmm. one, you know? Sure. So... These fucking, I don't know, they're saying Somalis, but it's just, I don't know that region well enough to be like, oh, yeah, maybe they were, maybe they weren't. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, they ambushed the fucking uh, Jeep. Or, yeah. Or, 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 or of what these it, tourists. Of right? these tourists, yeah. right? Um, they took a woman named, I'm going to say her name in case, in case anybody knows her out there. Why not? We, we have a bunch of listeners in, in right? Africa. You never know. You never know. Kimberly Jeez. Sue Endicott. Um, 35 and, uh, there was four gunmen that, that ambushed the vehicle. Uh, it says various illegal groups from Somali Islamist to Congolese based rebels sometimes operate in Uganda, but the kidnappers identity was unknown. If it was unknown, why would you speculate with this by the way? And this is Reuters. This isn't like CNN or something. Mm-hmm. So eh, shocked by that, but they left an elderly couple at the scene and they were fine. <laughs> yeah. What are they going to do with them? <laughs> are they trying to get money? <laughs> they took their watch. That was about it. But... No, but are they trying to get money for the girl? Yeah. $500,000. The old people aren't worth shit. No. Nobody's. Yeah. How weird is that? That what? Which old people are, are worthless. Gosh. <laughs> This is a rough one. I know there's a lot you want to say here, Japes. No, there isn't. Hmm? Just nobody's going to be paying. To, you know, you're not going to pay top dollar. <laughs> 
right? Yeah. Gosh, it's true. I mean, and it's she was thirty-five. The girl was thirty-five. If she was thirty-seven, no, it'd be a no. No, probably nobody's no, paying no go. top dollar for a thirty-seven-year-old no. gal. Yeah, I wonder if they looked at her ID and said, "Ah, they go, you're right on the cusp." So we'll take you. It's gonna be maybe a half a one mil. dude will be into it. Yeah, right? likes older gals. Oof. No, I don't know. They're probably trying to get you know They're get money to get from the family. She probably yeah, looked are. the you know most well off. I guess, but they right? left the old pe- the old couple. Just fucking like, induced them. Yeah, bones bones them out. And Later, just, guys. Yeah, and they're just like <laughs> by themselves. They probably died. Bruce. Yeah, we'll catch you on the flip. Catch on the floppity, Gramps. We don't have time for your fucking I shit. I can't go. I can't go off on the old people. I can't. <laughs> Did you see these soldiers just carrying them through the jungle? You know, just oh, oh god. god, dead weight. Yeah, just get, hop on my back. Uh uh-uh. uh, no thank you. Hop on my back. Hop on my back. No thank you. Hop on my back. No thank you. Hop on my back. You know, we're just you're carrying these two old whites. Elderly people through the jungle. Uh uh-uh. uh. What a fucking nightmare that would be. Make sure they have all their meds and their fucking meds, SBF insulin. 50. Yeah. <laughs> Let's face it, you're in Africa. It's hot as fuck. Oh. You know that they've got SBF 100 SBF 50 is running high. They need to eat something every <laughs> 20 minutes, a little something. Maybe, maybe fucking sooner. Mm. <laughs> mm. Nothing. But when I read that article today, I was like, wow, Javes, it came true, you know? No, and I do believe that they, you know, people find their victims based on, you know, whatever, what they think, you know, I haven't been roofied because they knew I would, it wouldn't affect me. I'm yeah. so strong, you know? Strong willed. <laughs> Had enough people around me. I don't know. All these <laughs> things where you're like, listen, if you're a, lady by yourself in Mexico in the wrong part of town, you know, then yeah, they'll yeah. single you out and go, you're dumb. You're, hey, you're a dumb. You're dumb. You're a dumb, dumb. You're a dumb, dumb. Yeah. Maybe I'll take you. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's up? Dumb, dumb. Oh, fuck, man. It's crazy. It's crazy out there in the jungle, James. It's crazy. You know, I think you'd be, I think you'd be stolen for what it's worth. I want that clear. You think you'd be what? You think I'd be what? I think you'd be taken. Oh, how sweet. Yeah. By the Somalis? Yeah. Blonde. Thank you so much. Hot, yeah. You know? Yeah. You look you look younger than 35. Older. You An look, older you look, you, gal. You look, you, you look younger than 35. So I just wouldn't show them my ID. No. <laughs> they ask for it and you're like, like no, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. I'm so young. I'm 32. You must take me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm 32. Speaking of old people, Kathy Lee. She's gone. I just need to say she's leaving. She no. was leaving today. I thought about giving her the revolutionary figure of the day, but I think we did it already for her. She was. I think we have. On the, on the way out, yeah. We have. She's a pro. Man, going through that footage today that they popped up was crazy. It's crazy. I didn't realize how long she was on TV, and I didn't realize that she was a legitimate singer either. She's she a le- wanna- yeah, she's a legitimate singer and she sings a lot, but it's kind of, she even said it. She was like, a lot of the albums I have boxes and boxes of sure. at my house. You know, sure, yeah. my mom owns a lot of them, yeah. but they, they didn't all, right? They didn't all sell. <laughs> they didn't all sell, yeah. but she likes to do it and she's fucking rich, so why not? And You can just do shit like you that You can just do whatever you rent, people. Yeah. Fucking fire off, you know, a Christmas album or whatever you want. Oh my gosh, if you're rich, you can. Yeah, because all those Christmas albums are. It's public domain, so it's free. Yeah. Where you're like, ah, all right, great. I'll sing Silent Night for people. Exactly. Fuck it. Exactly. (laughs) But. But she's been around for a while. I remember her for the scandal, though, obviously with her husband. I mean, yeah. It's weird. He's been dead for a while. He's been dead for a while. Being married that many years, you know, something's going to something's going to happen. Well, right? he was a professional football player, the Monday Night Football announcer. You know, I think he was a stewardess with huge cans. I remember she ended up in Playboy like that's uh 
And like that's going to happen, right? Uh, not to me, but yes, it's going to happen. You don't others. know how old was he? He was, he was older when that happened. He was. He was yeah. in his sixties, I think. Yeah. So yeah. if you're in your sixties, a young gal with big cans comes up to you. Biden. You know, Joe. You can Joe Biden. I think we would be able to get through it at that point. Yeah, I think you can Joe Biden. You can give a hair sniff, depending but, on uh, how much money you had. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and just because marriage is the most important thing, I think you can get through it. Yeah, exactly. Depending on how much money you have. Yeah. Um, the husband. But what she um, was able to do with her career was pretty astounding. I, I didn't, again, you're dating back 40 years on television, something like that. But today she, she goes off, right? So she just is this pro and she goes off on these tangents. They, they're, they're still coherent. She's not to the point where they're like you, all out there. But yeah. she did go someplace today that I needed. She was like speaking to me. And... She was saying that, you know, she mostly just wants to thank her parents who aren't here, here anymore, but they didn't have a lot growing up, but they were always really grateful and really always tried to have a fun time with them no matter what. So they like three jobs. The mom had two jobs. They were just working so much and never let the kids see that that was a bad thing. They just sort of were so grateful for whatever it was that they had, whether it's each other, a little bit of food, house, you know, and I think I needed, I just needed to hear that today. Like it was, she was speaking to me that these really small, these simple things, there's so, and there is so much, it's so noble, right? It's so heroic to me being in, you know, being a parent having to deal with stresses of business and everything. It's so, it's so much harder to just have fun and be grateful. Yeah. That's the hard thing. That's the more heroic. That's what your kids remember. That's what Kathy Lee on her last day is being like the, the thing that has stuck with me the most is that my parents never were, you know, stressed and striving for the next thing and greedy about something. They really were just, happy with all of us together whether it's in a shack and you're working three jobs or you know i think later in life she probably was able to help them a little bit right um and uh i I don't know i needed to hear that today look at you she was speaking to me that like you know i don't know it's just so much easier to get stressed and to be thinking about the next big thing or we get, we get caught to... up in this shit all the time where it's just like, you know, none of this as you're going through it, it doesn't really seem like it's a big deal or, you know, you don't really take time for yourself or, you know, you're worried about what your kids think about you and all that stuff of like, hey, am I spending enough time with them? And Well, in your pursuit, the problem is like in your pursuit to try and make a better life for your family, you aren't spending the time. Right. With them, you know, and I think that's, you know, when you're, like I said, building a business, trying to, you know, get out content, do this stuff, travel, whatever, in your pursuit to try and make a better life for your family, in the end, they will only remember how, how much time you spent with them, how, you know, how you made things fun, how you were happy with them how you taught them to be grateful. Those are the things they remember. They don't remember how you, you know, it's not going to be something that they talk about that you, you know, worked super hard and got, you know, and we're gone all the time and got, you know, I don't know. I know. I understand what you're saying. Do you know what I mean? I'm not trying to make either one. I don't want us to feel bad, but it is, it's a reminder to just stop the pursuit sometimes because it ha- they grow up so fast. Right. Uh, things change so quickly that, you know, remembering to. Yeah, like give our, a our, hug child, and our child turned five today. He turned five, dude. I know. Took him to preschool today and they all cheered him like a champion. And it was like, man, five, five years old, flew. Five, 
flew by. Flew by. And, and everybody always tells five, you. That, everybody always tells you that, and, and you're and always you're like, like Dude, eh, "Fuck off! This fucking shit is taking forever." I know, I know, but it doesn't. No, it's wild, isn't it? Damn. Damn, James. Uh, that'll bring us to the revolutionary figure of the day. Sometimes we just we just keep talking. We just keep rambling. Listen. Um, uh, revolutionary figure of the day. This one's a this one's a weird one today. This is an actual revolutionary figure. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we're throwing this way back to the Revolutionary War. <laughs> yeah. So the, there was a war hero, uh, Casimir Pulaski. I know you're a big fan. Love um, his earlier work. It, it's the father of the American cavalry who led the charge against the British forces. They're now saying was biologically female. I don't know if this is what? true or not. Yeah. Wait, so say it again. Sorry. The, 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 this Casimir Pulaski, mm-hmm. uh, who, again, is, is considered the father of the American cavalry, who led the charge against the British forces, they're saying is now bi- biologically female. So was dressing up as a I, they, They're saying they, they made the, this, this, and this is Georgia Southern, so I, look, they do good work over there. They claim the DNA testing, t- the testing shows that the skeletal remains was a biological female and that uh, he had an intersex condition uh-huh. known as congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Intersex, yeah. What the fuck does that mean? You're both. You have both. Creepy. They don't, they don't say hermaphrodite anymore. Why not? I, it's offensive to the intersex community. Shut the fuck up. Mm-mm. I didn't even know there was an intersex community. Intersex, so what, yeah. I, I don't understand. What, what, what do you have like so what happens, with a vagina? Yeah. So you have both and your parents. And a dick? Yeah. Where's the so you dick have at? a vagina and a dick. Where, like on top of each other? Like one and then there's like a hole under. It's Whoa. Basically. <clears throat> that's kind or of Or you have a, ovaries kind of and awesome. a dick. It's, it's kind of crazy. So the parents, when they're babies, have to make the decision. And most of the time they cut the dick off right they're like well you know instead of so a couple i watched this documentary and a couple of them kept the penis we're like okay i guess like i don't want to cut anything off like my kid right but uh, um the ones the ones that were like most pissed at their parents were the the moms that were like okay i guess cut that off and keep it female but they look now they're older they feel very male but they have a vagina and they don't have the penis anymore. And, but they're, they're both. Like they look feminine, but they're very male. It's, it's, they're both. That's crazy. And by community, you, I mean you, there's a What do you grow couple, beard? Can you grow a beard with it? Um, it doesn't look, maybe one of them. You, I mean, at, at certain point you start taking the hormones, right? Of right. whatever you feel. And especially at this point you can. But. I think the one, I mean, the one that stuck out to me was the, the guy was pissed that his mom made that decision at a baby, as a baby. Man, I think. And I'm, they know I, more now to both? not. Can yeah. You? Yes. And they know more now to not and wait till you're older to see like what you're more. You. If you know, I, if I had both, that'd be pretty rad. That would be pretty rad. I think. Yeah. Why I think not? I'd take both. Why not? I'm give, sure give both there's a com- go. I, I'm sure there's complications with that. When you well, get there older, is, but you know, but you could still be a man and be like, "All right, cool. Nobody's gonna know I have a little pussy down there." You know, <laughs> <laughs> like nobody's gonna know that. It's dark, you know. Gosh, you really have a way of just simplifying no. uh, really complex <laughs> issues. <laughs> Look, I could be a dude. Nobody's gonna know I have a little pussy down there. Nah, nobody's yep. gonna know. And I think that's you summed it up. And I think that's it. <laughs> and that's really. Uh, I think that's what that's what I'd, I'd it all like boils to do. down. I don't know what they're all fucking complaining Me about. Neither. Basically, I think, Hush. I, think, I think you you leave them with both and give them the option, and then you know, yes, and later that's on in life, what they now know, yeah. Then later on in life, you'd be like, hey, which one do you want? Which one feels better to you? Sew up the pussy, right? Yes, yeah, so sew up that pussy. I want that dick. <laughs> oh Just sew up my pussy. Because, you know, at that point, you're probably, what, 18 years old, 19, Ooh. voice is a little deeper. Sure. Just walk into the dock. Hey, doc, what you getting so of that pussy? This dick wants to ride. Right. This dick wants to hunt. Yeah. You know? 
Ha. So <laughs> uncomfortable right now. <laughs> hey, Doc. I got a favor to ask you. I want you to sew up that pussy. No, it's not going to be a favor. I mean, you're going to pay him, but yeah. this dick wants to hunt. I love you have a doctor that you can just ask favors of like that. Yeah. Surgery favors. Yeah. This, this, hey, this big old. Quick favor. This big wants to sniff, you know? Right. <laughs> when are we done with this show is the only thing we're I'm We're done now, thinking. James. All right. This was fun. We're back. Uh, we're back in Wilmington. We're back home. It's nice. Oh, my we're gosh. We've been on the road 70s? for a long time. We left. We left it. Uh, we left the pollen and the shit behind. <laughs> we did, and then we come back right as it's getting to be seventies. Not so much. It's Azalea Fest down here this weekend too. Gosh, I hope there's enough. <laughs> the weather's been so weird. The azaleas don't even know when to bloom. <laughs> it's Azalea Fest. They always do this weird like country musician and then and a the rapper, Ice Cube. Yeah. So it's, it's, I, and it's back to back. So like, uh, and, and if, if for, for those of you who haven't been to downtown Wilmington, North Carolina, it's great. It's a great town. Totally great. Like they shot Dawson's Creek here in, in One Tree Hill. It's gorgeous. I love Wilmington. Uh, anybody military out there has probably rolled through here and partied. I'm sure. It's fucking awesome. But when they have this Azalea Fest, they try to make it for everyone. And they throw a Friday night concert and a Saturday night concert. Usually Friday night is country Mm -hmm. and then Saturday is is rap. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Friday night is Hank Williams Jr. Okay. Which I'd be, I'm fucking down. Yeah. Right. But Saturday night is Ice Cube. And it's like, man, you want to talk about two polar opposites. What was it last time? It was like Snoop Dogg and someone? Yeah, we we saw Snoop. We saw Snoop Dogg. Yeah. It was shitty. It was a shitty shitty show. He was doing karaoke. Anybody with a backing track like that, mm-hmm. I just can't get down on. Um, it was fun to see Martha Stewart's best friend, though. And <laughs> uh, you believe they're still doing a fucking show together on VH1? Oof, you want to talk about selling the fuck out? Snoop has no problem with it. He's had no problem for a long time. I know, but he'll he'll go on social media and call people out and be like, "Dude, you're not part of the culture and the community." It's like. Hey, man, you're doing a VH1 cooking show with Martha Stewart. Yeah. And you have been for years at this point. So don't talk about being fucking true to this. Yeah, exactly. And he's got the Stevie Wonder hair where he's just... Always hanging on for dear life. It's it's bald, three quarters of the head back. But long and braided. But long braided. And you're like, hey, man, just shave the rest of that shit off. Like, Stevie can't see it. So maybe Stevie doesn't know. Well, I mean, Stevie can see shapes. He can see shapes and colors and probably at this point fully see. Yeah. Because so, he's rich. He is. He is rich. So I, I think he can see. So he know both of them know better. Just shave that shit at this point, you know? But yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to Ice Cube. I have no desire to go to. No, I'm not going to Ice Cube. Um, this, or at this Garden point, Party or anything. And not that I, because I, 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 lo- I love Ice Cube. Um I, I, it's weird. I love both like Hank Williams Jr. and Ice Cube, but um, yeah. I just don't want to like at this point of Ice Cube's career, I don't want to see Ice Cube. He's too rich to care where I'm like, yeah. what do you care about? But I, I heard he's got new music out. So maybe that's why he's doing it. I for sure don't want to hear Ice Cube's new music. Well, I mean, look, I what just is he? Don't, I'm saying for he's myself, be in his I'm 50s, saying for right? myself. And my only problem with the Dr. They, Dre is fifty. They uh they only sell barefoot wine there. Uh, I'm not doing it. No, you can't do barefoot. I'm not doing it. Why is I've that? I've done it for years. I'm not doing it anymore. Why why is that? Because it's cheap as fuck, dude. Man, but nobody everybody that's the worst hangover of all time. You yeah. get you get a hangover as you're drinking it. He's gonna be fifty years old this year. Ice Cube's gonna be fifty. So Well, cool. I, yeah, I don't I, I have no desire to see a fifty year old ice cube. The only rapper at 50 I care about is, is Jay-Z. True. Jay-Z still puts on a fucking hell of a show. I don't Beyonce's, know how old he is. Beyonce's husband? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Jeez. That's terrible. Yeah, he's 50. He's going to be 50 this year, too. Jay-Z's going to be 50 years old this year. But I, I saw him maybe, I don't know, four or five years ago. He's great. So, Shit. I yeah, like Jay Z, I'd pay for. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go pay for Ice Cube at fifty. Yeah, I just, I just, I just feel like it's going to be a lot of back and track, and you know. To me, I would feel uncomfortable 
with all the southern moms that are going to be super into it. There's going to be a, a lot of white southern moms there, yeah. Uh-huh. So I guess that just makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, same. Because I feel bad for him looking out at the crowd. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He doesn't know what Azalea Fest is. That is no, white, he does not know what he signed up for, and none of them ever do. Late 40s Who was moms. the last time? Nelly? I think they he canceled, oh, yeah. though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he did. I think he saw the moms and was just like, I'm, "Something I'm happened," out and of here. he goes, "He tore, he tore his bandaid off and just ran off yep, stage." Yep. So it's a moment that I don't wish. Again, it's the same on reason, any artist. Yeah. yeah, it's the same reason I don't go up to Yellow Wolf and tell him I'm a fan. Yeah. Because for him, I don't want him to have that feeling. Exactly. Of like, <laughs> hey, you're of like, oh shit. My moms I'm love me. Yeah. I'm over. Yeah. Right. Yeah, either way, so, let's go. Yeah. we'll go to Hank tomorrow night. Let's do it. Yeah, uh, I'm down for Hank. I haven't seen him in years, man. I probably haven't seen him in 15 years, probably. 20? Fuck, probably 20. I've never seen him, so be fun. Yeah, he's great. And that would be fun. It would be on brand, everybody. You yeah. know, that that would feel good. Yeah, because he's old as fuck. So like, and he's you know, been performing to Southern Moms forever. He'd be, he'd be amped about it. I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure he's yeah. fired up for tomorrow night. Yeah, I don't wish I don't wish that for Ice Cube, and so I don't want to be there for that because <laughs> he's better than that. He doesn't need he doesn't need that. <laughs> well, look, if you're in downtown Wilmington uh, tonight, because this show airs on Friday, um, come, come on out to <laughs> Hank. We'll have a drink with you. Come see us at the Hank Williams. Come Jr. see, yeah, Hank okay. Williams Jr. Uh, come see us downtown. We'll go, okay, we'll go and see Hank. And, and we'll go out with just you singing a couple bars of one of his songs. Okay? Boy, and- you know you know it's Monday Night Football for me. Like, he's still the dude. What is it? All my rowdy friends are coming over tonight. <laughs> like, I, I, like <laughs> if, if I don't hear nice, him nice, fucking doing nice, Monday nice. Night Football... I'm not, I, I can't get into the game. Like, sure. I need to, I need out, to hear that. Exactly. Yeah. And like, you know, there was a period of time when they brought in like Carrie Underwood and some other people to do covers of it. And I was like, get the fuck off get my lawn. Get out of here, you shit. Yeah. You, sh- you little shit sh- neck. What am I, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a very aggressive. <laughs> you get out of here, you little you little shit. shit. You little shit. It's like you a, take your shit yeah, out of here. It's a mom. It's a mom <laughs> telling you to get out of here, you little shit. Come see us at Hank tomorrow night down in Wilmington. Uh, we'll have some beers and some barefoot and call it a fucking night. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. the j this is The Revolution. Subscribe on YouTube. We're making a big push in a video this year. Subscribe to the show on YouTube. Good night, everyone. Good night.